Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Elva Haiga. I'm a PDG and International Service Chair from District 7820 in Eastern Canada. I will be sharing the virtual stage today with my colleague and co-host, PDG Bill Gorma, International Service Chair for District 7120 in New York State, USA. At this point, I'll ask Bill to come to the stage and offer you a few words of welcome. Thank you, Elva, and a warm greeting to everyone joining us today. We were looking forward to presenting this program for you live in Hawaii, but instead we're bringing Hawaii virtually to you and hundreds of others around the world. We hope to ignite your international service interest into a passion, knowing that there is a large community of dedicated service experts to guide and support your efforts. Again, welcome. We are absolutely thrilled you're with us today. I would like to uh, welcome you as well to this breakout session on international services and thank you for taking the time to join us. We will focus on district resource networks and how they can help you with your international service projects. Before we start, I have a few housekeeping items that I would like to share with you. In the upper right hand corner of your screen, if you haven't already done so, I'd ask you to select the speaker view. And again, if you haven't already done so, I'd ask you to go to the participant list at the bottom of your screen, uh, right click on your name and uh, add your province or country. There are quite a number of you on the line today and we'd certainly like to know uh, where you're located. We will uh, ask you to remain muted throughout the session, but if questions come to mind, I'll ask you to put those in the chat box in a private message to Holly, our producer, and she'll track them and at the end of the session, we'll have some time for Q&A. Now, there are quite a few of you on the line. So if we don't have the time to handle all the questions, we'd ask you to take note of the contact information of the presenters and send your question to one of us, and we will make sure that it is answered. We've made a few assumptions about those of you on the line today. The main one is that we feel that you all have some knowledge of international services. You may lack some awareness of the concept of the district resource network, its benefit and value, and perhaps even how to find experts to help you build a network. In this session, we hope that you will learn how to develop an, a district resource network, short acronym DRN, that you will understand or better understand the role of district international service chair in developing successful projects, and that you'll discover how to leverage your own DRN to help your clubs develop projects that have greater impact. Three speakers will share their experience uh, with us today and, and show you how they've used this technique to develop more successful projects. So without further ado, let's get started. Our speakers today, first up, Karen Parkhurst, who's International Service Project Leader and Mentor District 7120 in New York State, USA. Secondly, Aldo Villanovich, a District International Service Chair from District 7080, Southwestern Ontario, Canada. 
And, and finally, PDG Jim Lutet, who's the lead for Rotary Action Group Chairs Council, and he's from District 7070 in Southern Ontario, Canada. So what is a district resource network anyway? It's a fairly simple concept. It's nothing more than a list of individuals who have subject knowledge and expertise in international services and who are willing to serve as mentors to you and your clubs. So how do you create one of these networks? Uh, first of all, you should create the position of district international service chair for your area if it does not already exist. This individual works very closely with your foundation chair, supports international service projects, connects international teams and experts, and can help identify resources, both human and financial, to help with your project. Secondly, you can ask leaders of recent global, global grants in your district to become mentors uh, for those interested in international projects. These individuals should have experience in one of the three areas that you see in the green blocks. The first project planning, implementation, and judiciary leadership. In one of the seven areas of focus, I haven't made a mistake, you'll hear later on in the program that we have a new one as of July 1, 2020. And the third is in the Rotary Grants process. Then thirdly, develop a, a list of local experts in your district. They may be Rotarians, or non-Rotarians and make a note of the organizations uh, where they're located and which may have uh, information that could be useful to you. There are several categories that you should include, consider including in your network. First, how to identify and define an international project. Secondly, Expertise in a community needs assessment. Every global grant requires a community assessment. Thirdly, the areas of focus. You want to have on that list your district international service chair facilitators. Don't forget your Rotary Foundation chair. And if you have any experts in the in the district who are good at fundraising or helping you find find funds for your project include that also uh, a consider a connection to the rotary staff the experts at rotary headquarters the regional grants officers area focus managers and then groups outside your your own district such as the cadre of technical advisors and rotary action groups rotary fellowship groups now you'll hear more about these groups as we move through the presentation. Uh, another uh, important category is toward the back end of the project, expertise in measurement, monitoring, interim reporting, and the list goes on. Now once you have assembled all of these experts, what do you do with them? The simplest way to keep track of the expertise that you've found is just to use a simple Excel spreadsheet in which you list their names, their area of expertise, and their contact information. It's not, nothing complicated, but very, very useful. Now that you've learned how to create a simple district resource network, I'm going to hand you over to my co-host, PDG Bill Gourmand, who will have some suggestions for you and how that you can strengthen that network. Bill, you're up. Thank you, Ova. Once your district has created a district international service chair position and developed a district resource network, your next step is to begin strengthening that network. 
expand your resource network by adding resources from outside your district. Begin communicating with foundation chairs, grants chairs, international service chairs, and others from other districts, other zones, other regions, other portions of the world. And don't forget to reach out to RI's staff, beginning with your region's regional grants officer. That person will be able to connect you with their counterpart in the host district where that grant activity will take place. There are currently 27 grants officers on staff to, uh, to help you. Another important role is the area of focus managers. Each area of focus has its own manager. The environment, which is the seventh area added on July 1, as Elva indicated, hasn't yet identified a manager, but that's certainly in process. They can guide you with the necessary actions and knowledge required for your project. When you're getting started and you just have an idea or a proposal for a project, that's the time to begin the conversation to help design that project. The area focus managers are available for consultation about grants applications questions and project design. In fact, they can be by your side throughout the entire, throughout the entire project. The managers work interactively with the regional grants officers and other sections of the grants team at RI to offer recommendations for improved sustainability to help make your project even more successful. And these conversations alone can reduce or even eliminate the need for resubmitting your project's grant application. Your district resource network becomes even more valuable when you add the Rotary Foundation's cadre of technical advisors. They are subject experts and they can assist your project team with many of the technical aspects of project planning and execution to include community needs assessments, progress monitoring, process evaluations, financial management, and really more. And at this time, there are over 700 volunteer Rotarians with skills in healthcare, accounting and fiduciary responsibility, economic development, water and sanitation, engineering, literacy, peace and conflict med uh, mediation, and honestly, the list goes on. Next, adding to your district resource network are Rotary Action Groups. They bring value by leveraging their expertise and leveraging their networks to, to, enhance, to enhance your project. They make a difference, a positive impact for people, the environment, by connecting passions of people through environment, endangered species, plants and animals. And the depth and breadth of their contribution is incredible as there are over 27,000 action group members in over 300 countries who just last year alone supported in excess of 1,600 projects. And remember that each action group member is a skilled and accomplished practitioner in their individual fields of interest. And then there are Rotary Fellowship Groups. Rotary Fellowship Groups, you know, everybody enjoys doing something and they enjoy sharing their interest and passion with others. Like, Perhaps motorcycling, you know, the International Fellowship of Motorcycling Rotarians. Jim Lutet just popped in on his Harley. You'll get a chance to hear from him in a little bit. But there's also Brew. Beers Rotarians enjoy Worldwide Fellowship. I'm a member of Brew, and we give annually to water and sanitation. So this, this has the Rotary connection, taking what we love to do and being able to couple that into what we love to do with Rotary. This list goes on. You can have aircraft pilots, bird watchers, magicians, quilters, tennis players. You see, fellowship groups are an important element of a district resource network because when Rotarians get together to share an interest, the conversation almost always includes a discussion about what they're currently working on within their club or within their district. And that person that you're speaking with just might be able to help you with your international project, or they might know someone who can. And here's where it all comes together. The DISC, the District International Service Chair, because that individual can help you assist your project by making connections with an introduction 
to your district's committee chairs of the foundation, vocational service, and others as appropriate. Members of your local district's resource network, like technical experts and prior grants coordinators, Rotary International's grant process resources, such as regional grants officers in your project's host country, fellow DISCs in host country, Rotary International's resource networks to include the cadre of technical advisors, Rotary Action Groups, Peace Fellows, international resources activities like international conventions and friendship exchanges. When you are participating, you go to these. You meet so many people with so many interests and so many passions guaranteed to connect to something you're working on. If you have an idea or you're looking for ideas, the resource recommendations from the Rotary Showcase, international service project fairs, highly encouraged to go. And now you're probably asking, well, who puts this all together? It's simple. The answer is the district international service chair because that individual is in that position to be your connector. And in many cases, the resource experts can be connected to your project team virtually. I mean, we're, we're meeting virtually today. These people can connect with you virtually with your project teams. Now, after you've strengthened your district resource network and you're looking at how to leverage it, the following process really follows a logical progression of a grant. And it's simply a process that allows the project to flow logically from start to finish. And it illustrates where the resources we've been discussing and will be discussing are best used to create greater impact and improve sustainability for, for your projects. A need must always be identified by the host country. I mean, think about it. The people in that country, they are living the need. And no one is close enough to understand exactly what will help. But them, you know, that need is then presented to a Rotary Club in that host country. Then a Rotary Club outside the host country becomes involved with the project, and that's identified as the international partner. It's at this point where the project oh, team begins consulting with the district Rotary Foundation Chair and the district international service chair to detail the need. And while working closely with the foundation chair, the district international service chair now begins connecting with the project team and their resources. The community needs assessment, which is now required, as we know, on all global grants, that's coordinated by the host partner. Before and during the community needs assessment is the time for involvement by the regional grants officers, the cadre of technical advisors, Rotary Action Groups, Fellowship Groups, because you see, they can provide expert input as the detailed project plan begins to take form when quotes are received from qualified resource suppliers and agreements are signed and that funding model is beginning to get prepared. Now this is when the detailed project plan becomes finalized and assessed to ensure a sustainable outcome is possible. Funding commitments are secured and then the project team generates the grant proposal and submits it first to the district for their approval and from there on to Rotary International for final approval. Following Rotary International's approval, the project team begins project implementation. The project is managed by the host partner club, who also prepares that final report. And when the project is complete, the full team inaugurates the project and celebrates its success with the host community. By now, you should by now, you should have all the information needed to begin building or strengthening your district's resource network. Begin building to utilize your district's network immediately at the beginning of a project. You know, once you have begun to create and use that resource network, you'll see the results as projects move to completion faster and more easily with greater impact and more sustainable results. You see, these experiences, as we mentioned before, will bring international service practitioners directly to you. I mean, what else and what more and what better opportunity is there than to simply ask? Well, Karen Parkers from District 7120 in New York State is an international project leader and mentor. She's also currently serving as her district's executive secretary. So Karen will share her experiences about creating a district resource network and a few of the benefits that she was able to bring to her project. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to our stage,
Karen Parkhurst. Thank you, Bill. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our group today. So you're here today because you're interested in global grants. You want to get involved or you're already involved and want some tips and information to make the process easier and more effective. I would like to start with the word passion. The most important characteristic of an effective global grant is passion. Passion for the rotary work you'll be doing, passion for creating a change in lives you'll be touching, passion for the country and culture you'll be working in. With passion, you'll gain the skills you need to make a successful project. And you'll be able to appreciate the joy in the eyes of people who have just been given potable water or solar energy or a viable school system or a life-saving health program. People with great passion can make the impossible happen. How do you find a project? There's project fairs, visitors from Rotary Clubs in other countries, your own district Rotarians, youth exchange advocates and alumni, Collaborate with a Rotary International partner such as Shelterbox. There's many sources. You finally have a project in hand and you're ready to get started. You know what country you'll be working in. You have a host country partner. Your host country partner has done a needs assessment and is working on a budget and obtaining pro forma invoices. You have engaged a project team from your club. You'll now get started by seeking input from experts and identifying resources and preparing a funding plan. The funding plan is really important for you because as the international partner, this is your prime responsibility. Now is when you start using your district resource network. This network is what you make it, the people you contact, the experts you already know, they're eager to help, Start with the District International Service Chair and your District Rotary Foundation Chair. Give them an outline of your project. Ask the District Rotary Foundation Chair for district designated funds. DDF will form the basis of your funding model, so always ask for a lot, but honestly, be prepared to accept less, sometimes much less. There are other district leaders who are able to help. Many have been involved in previous Rotary grants, Look outside your club, talk to Rotarians who have been to other countries via Friendship Exchange, Peace Fellow, former Youth Exchange students. They all have ideas and may just have the background you need. There's also other resources in your district, local businesses, research firms, colleges, universities. Many have contacts and experiences in designing projects in developing countries, and some have actually um, implemented projects in, in, in developing countries. Start your application with the help of the Rotary Foundation Guide to Global Grants. At this point, more network resources are available for your use. Generally, the host partner will complete the bulk of the application. However, however, it's very important that the international partner have input in the application. There are some critical elements that need to be included in any successful grant application, such as a sustainability plan or a training plan. Communicate regularly with the host partner to ensure that all of the required elements are included. At the beginning of the global grant effort, always, always talk to the Rotary Foundation Regional Grants Officer. They can provide critical information about the host country, Many countries have unique requirements for humanitarian work and your host partner Rotary Club. They're there to help throughout the grant application process. They'll be one of the first to see your application when it's submitted. They also have suggestions for other experts you might want to use throughout the process. And at the beginning, always talk to an area of focus expert. There are specific requirements for grants in all of the areas of focus, and it's important that you know these requirements. And these experts can give you a list of what is acceptable and what is not. And they can help you determine some of the elements that need to be included, such as training, and how to structure that part of the grant process. When I was working with a club on a global grant to provide services to deaf children in Zambia, I contacted an area of focus expert to determine whether the project should be in the basic education and literacy area or the economic and de uh, community development area. 
They helped me determine which was appropriate for our grant, and they sent me an invaluable sheet that had acceptable and unacceptable projects in that area of focus. You may have hit a roadblock, or you just need some additional expert feedback, advice, or information. There is a cadre of experts, engineers, doctors, teachers, other professionals, all of whom have specific knowledge of their field. Did you bring any and, most, and most have worked on global grants and have suggestions for how to overcome some of the challenges of working in a developing nation. Many of them have knowledge of the cultural differences that can cause issues in managing your project. They can be an enormous help. I once contacted the cadre about a project in Haiti, and Haiti does have unique requirements for humanitarian work. Within a half an hour, I had replies from three individuals who had worked on projects in Haiti, and one had done a similar project to ours and was very able to help with our particular issue. Finally, look and think outside the box. If possible, visit the host country to experience firsthand their culture, their language, their people, their situations. Meet the people, embrace their culture, visit the location of your project, meet the host country Rotary Club members, know their successes and failures. And you can approach an appropriate NGO, non-governmental organization, experienced in the host country culture and experienced in your area of focus. NGOs are extremely valuable to the global grant process. And in many host countries, the Peace Corps is also an option for help with your project. Two of the projects I've worked on in Nicaragua have had Peace Corps volunteers assigned to our project and they worked on it throughout its development and implementation. I've also had project help from a local college who sponsors an international program in Nicaragua. These international students have been a tremendous aid, especially in bridging the language gap since I don't speak Spanish. Personally, I can tell you there has, there's nothing that has been more, had more impact on my life than my work with global grants. I've met with a woman who thanked me for easing the negative effects of wood burning stove fumes on her and her children's lungs. I've seen Nicaraguan school children drink potable water for the first time from a spigot provided by a Rotary Foundation Global Grant Water and Sanitation Project. With that same project, I sat with a village of over 500 people while they celebrated turning on the potable water supply to their homes. We sang together, laughed together, ate together, all in celebration. I've seen farmers in a remote Indian village in Paraguay use a tractor for the first time in their farming lives. Before the tractor, all of the tilling, planting, harvesting had been done by hand. Visit these project areas. They are such a satisfying experience and should be part of your passion. Thank you for your interest in Global Grants. My contact information is included in these slides and I'm available to help wherever I can with your Global Grant projects. And remember, your passion can enrich the lives of others. Thank you, Karen. Next up, we have Aldo Vilanovic. Aldo is coming from Burlington, Ontario, Canada. He's a District International Service Chair and also serves as the Grants Review Committee Vice Chair for his district. Aldo will share with us how he applied the process flow I spoke about earlier, how he applied that to a project. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Aldo Balanovic. Well, thank you, Bill. Good morning, good day, or good evening, wherever you may be. Uh, my name is Aldo Velanovich, and I'm very active with the international service work in District 7080, which is located southwestern Ontario here in Canada. I'm fortunate for having had good mentorship doing international service project work with the planning and the administration that I just wish to share some with you. The following is an example of a project presented to a host partner club in Guatemala. And I must explain the host partner club is the club 
in the country where the project is being done. And also how the project process was conducted by an international partner club in the district. The international partner club being the international club that takes the project lead and partners with the host partner club. Now this area of Guatemala, around the town of Guilan, is very poor. The people there had an old water plant that was nearby that was not providing safe and clean drinking water. Many were getting sick and the vulnerable were dying. The need for a better source of water was presented to the local Rotary Club in Gualan. But the area is poor. They did not have the money to improve the water system. Coincidentally, a number of international Rotarians, including myself, were in that area of Guatemala at that time. The Rotary Club of Gualan conducted, contacted us and introduced us to the need for improving the existing water supply tr and treatment. Rotarians there arranged a meeting with the mayor, the area administrators, and local Mayan leaders. That was followed by a review of the needs at the existing water plant and an approximate budget cost was agreed upon. An international club in Canada accepted the project challenge and did a follow-up meeting with the district international service chair and the district foundation chair to review the need process. Together, in consultation with the host partner, the resources available in Wallon and in Guatemala were identified. All the material and equipment was sourced and produced locally. Procuring the equipment locally is very important for future parts and replacement purpose. In cooperation with the host partner and the international partner, a funding formula was established. The host partner club proceeded to conduct complete need assessment, including pay per use, fee structure for sustainability. Pay per use is a very important factor. Locally, an international water plant experts were consulted for advice on proper water treatment, design and maintenance. Fortunately, all equipment and material was sourced in Guatemala and firm quotes were obtained. The municipality, due to lack of funds, agreed to provide labor and equipment to do the work. All was in kind at no cost to the project. The in kind pro uh, portion is very important for pride of ownership. Host partner Rotarians conducted further meetings and secured signed agreements with the municipality and the local Mayan leaders. Together, the host partners and international partners developed a realistic project process plan, followed by the international partners obtaining financial support. In all, 23 Rotary Clubs and three districts supported the project. Together, a grant proposal was generated and submitted for approval by the district and RI. Following the project approval, a construction schedule and spending formula was devised. The host partner club conducted all the supervision and managed the expenditures by way of a separate local bank account. It is very important to maintain a separate bank account for the project. The final report was completed by the host partner club in consultation with the international partner club. And the successful project 
was inaugurated by the joint project team. Now, it is our intent to provide this short example as a template that can be used for many other similar projects. Now, an important note is that now over 45,000 people in Guilan, nearby Mayan villages, and local schools have good, safe drinking water. Since water was provided, a number of schools in the area have been upgraded by other rotary projects, from having basic latrines to having proper toilets, hand wash stations, and drinking fountains, Resu resulting in a dramatic improvement in student health and improved school attendance. Yes, my friends, we did make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Aldo. And now continuing with the examples of the application of these tools and resources is Jim Lutet. Uh, Jim comes from Southern Ontario, Canada, District 7070. He leads the Rotary Action Group Chair Council. You just saw him uh, drop in on his uh, motorcycle as a member of the International Fellowship of, Motoring, of Motorcycling Rotarians. He's also a member of the Fellowship of Rotarian Past District Governors. Jim's a past president of the Rotary Action Group for Microfinance and Community Development and is currently the chair of the Rotary Action Group Chairs Council, working with the existing 25 action groups we have today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we welcome to the stage, Jim Lutet. Thank you, Bill. And I'm gonna remove my hat so I, that doesn't distract uh, you from uh, the presentation. So hello to all and thank you for participating in our session today. It is a pleasure to be able to speak with you and provide you with information on Rotary Action Groups. Some of you may be asking what an action group is. Well, based on some recent estimates that I have heard, only about 35% of Rotarians, that's only 35% of Rotarians know what an action group is. So who are they? Well, they're a group of Rotarians, they're family members, and rotor actors from clubs all over the world interested in advancing the object of rotary by working together on a common cause. They also include rotary program alumni, anyone who has ever participated in a rotary or foundation program, which includes Interact, RILA, which is Rotary Youth Leadership Awards, Youth Exchange, Peace Fellowships, Ambassadorial Scholarships, Rotary Community Corps and vocational training teams. Also until last year, membership and action groups was only for individuals, but now Rotary clubs, Rotary clubs and districts can also join an action group. What do they do? Their mandate is to work with clubs and districts that have community development and humanitarian service projects. They can provide subject matter expertise, project planning, and implementation experience in various service areas, such as environment, water, mental health, peace, and microfinance, to name a few. They can also help clubs and districts to identify partners and resources, both internal, which is within the Rotary world, mm -hmm. and external, outside of Rotary. Bill showed you some stats on action groups earlier in this part of the presentation. So I won't go through them again, other than to emphasize that there are over 27,000 members. That's 27,000 action group members out there ready to work with you as a resource. And these are the top 10 countries with the highest concentration of action group members. If your geography is a little hazy, just follow the red dots as I mentioned the country name. The first, is the United States of America, followed by Canada, Australia, India, the United Kingdom, Nigeria, Philippines, 
South Africa, Germany, and tied for number 10, Belgium and Kenya. Most of the action groups view themselves not only as specific subject matter resources, but as resources in an area of focus, which are, and there are seven of them, promoting peace, fighting disease, providing clean water and sanitation, saving mothers and children, supporting education, growing local economies, and as you heard, our newest area of focus as of July 1st, supporting the environment. You can see from the slide what area of focus the action groups work in, with some working in more than one. You can also check out the individual action groups at www.rotary.org slash action groups. So this website gives you some good information for researching an action group. Information like a directory, their annual reports, action group bylaws, and a Rotary and Action blog. Action groups support Rotary strategic objectives through the support of projects, and they provide connection opportunities for those involved in these projects. They leverage expertise and networks that enhance the impact of projects, and they help to deepen engagement and assist in building and retaining membership. Also importantly, action groups help to show the many faces of Rotary, which increases its appeal. So you might ask, how do action groups enhance Rotary's impact in public image? We believe by joining action groups, club members will be able to connect with like-minded Rotarians outside their own club and engage in service activities in the areas that they're most passionate about. You've already heard Karen start her presentation using the word passion. This is what it's all about. Rotarians working together on their projects with passion to create sustainable change in those areas being worked in. By allowing opportunities to connect and serve outside the club structure, action groups help diversify and improve the rotary experience of club members. Also, action groups can help clubs scale up smaller projects to larger, higher impact, more sustainable international initiatives as they bring technical expertise, partners, funds, and other resources to projects. These high impact projects advance up a club's public image first and foremost, and helps develop stronger clubs with more engaged members pioneering innovative, impactful service projects. Overall, action groups believe they can benefit you as a Rotarian and your club. Let me recap some of the benefits. They bring technical expertise, partners, and funds, very importantly, funds to Rotary projects. They enhance Rotary's impact and public image through the impactful large-scale projects that they support. They give members opportunities to engage in service activities outside of their own clubs, districts, and countries. They also bring in new members to Rotary and assist in retention. Very important, the retention aspect. They provide networking opportunities with like-minded Rotarians from around the world, and they support global grants and project enhancement. For example, last year, 21, 21 of our 25 action groups have assisted with at least one global grant. To show you an example of an action group's involvement in changing lives for sustainable community projects, and to help reinforce what I've already said, I will use one from the Rotary Action Group for Microfinance Community Development that I have been involved with since the inception. It is, a, it is the Honduras Economic and Community Development Program that started in 2013. So why was Honduras picked? Well, this was a multifaceted vision of a past district governor from District 5360, Calgary West was the club, covering microfinance, water, and health. As well, the action group had a few members in Honduras who knew microfinance, so the potential for a strong partnership was there. Honduras, if you don't know, Honduras has a population of over 9 million people and is the second poorest country in Central America. 
approximately 66% of the population live in poverty, with 16% of them not able to meet basic living needs. And this is before COVID-19. What has, the, what has uh, the impact been to date? Well, to date, over $2.5 million has been donated to this project. And another global grant in the amount of $251,000 was approved on December 31st, 2019 for the latest phase. So far, over 9,000 entrepreneurs have been helped with 56% of them being women. The repayment ratio of loans has been excellent at 97%. With COVID-19, we know repayment ratios with all banks nationally and internationally have dropped. But fortunately, our local microfinance institution partner has a strong management team in place. And they are monitoring and working with their clients closely during these trying times. But this overall project is just not about microloans. It's about building sustainability in various communities within Honduras. Safe drinking water, financial literacy, and client support are important tools, with our local partner providing business training and conducting site visits on a regular basis. Rotary Club sponsors, which there are over 40 clubs involved for this latest phase. Multiple districts, the Rotary Action Group for Microfinance Community Development, and our two implementing partners, one of which is a global microfinance institution, have the opportunity to conduct due diligence visits each year to review the progress and monitor and evaluate the various phases. And this is only one example I could use. So I previously mentioned the website for action groups, and here it is again, you can see it. Jot it down and check us out. I'll also put the address in the chat box so you can just copy and paste it. Now, back to Bill to wrap up the session. Thank you, Jim. So why are we sharing this information with you today? It's simple, because every day, people from all corners of the world, they need our help. And their future? Well, their future is in our hands. We hope you have developed a new appreciation for how the role of the District International Service Chair using district resource networks and, and you can open doors and provide opportunities to help make your next service project bigger, bolder, and better with even more sustainable results and greater impact. We trust that the tools shared today will help you in your international service work and grant activity. In the coming weeks and months, if you have questions about the topics or tools we've covered today, please contact any one of our program presenters We'd love to hear from you. Remembering that this program was recorded and will be available on the RI's website learning center for your future reference. Please also let your international service and Rotary Grant colleagues know that if they were not able to join us today, this program is available on the learning center for their viewing as well. So on behalf of Elva, Karen, Aldo, and Jim, I'd like to thank you for the privilege of your time and the investment you've made today in the future of our world. Because as you learned more about how district resource networks make international service projects successful, we thank you so much for joining us today.